Yeah, so so welcome back, everybody. Um, our next uh, speaker is uh, Dr. Diem uh, Irake, from, and he's speaking to us from India, and I understand it's pretty late at night there, so, so double thanks to you, Diem, for your participation. Dr. Firake will talk to us about the status of bowel control of fall armyworm in India. Um, Dr. Firake uh, obtained his PhD from the G.B. Pant University of Agriculture and, and Technology in India. His current institution is the Indian Council of Agricultural Research, or ICAR, uh, specifically the Directorate of Floricultural Research in Pune, India. His broad area of research is bowel control, insect ecology, herbivore plant interactions, IPM, and integrative taxonomy. The area of fall armyworm, his focus has been on bowel control through natural enemies and botanicals, ecology, population dynamics, and toxicology. So, um, el siguiente ponente es el Dr. DM Firake, quien nos acompaña desde la India. Allá son. Ya es tarde por la noche, entonces un doble agradecimiento para el doctor Firaque por aguantarnos hasta esta hora. El doctor Firaque obtuvo su doctorado en la Universidad de Pan de Agricultura y Tecnología en la India. Eh, trabaja en, en, el, en el Consejo Indio de Investigación Agrícola, específicamente en la Dirección de Investigación Floricultural en la India también. Su área de investigación es control biológico, ecología de insectos, interacciones planta herbívoro, manejo integrado de plagas y taxonomía integrativa. El área de, de, de cogollero en particular se ha dedicado al control biológico con enemigos naturales y botánicos, ecología, población, dinámica de poblaciones y toxicología. So without further interruption, I'll pass the microphone on to you, TM. Thank you. Thank you. Myself, Dr. D.M. Firke, I'm working as a senior scientist, agriculture entomology at ICER. And today I will cover the topic, status of biological control of fall armyworm in India. So before starting this aspect, I will show you some of the invasion history of this fall armyworm in today, India. Before 2016, the fall distribution was confined to the America. In 2016, it has entered in Africa, and within two years, it's covered almost all the African countries. And in 2018, it entered in Asia for the first time in India. Again, within two to three years, it's covered entire Asian countries, including and also Australia. So coming to the India, fall was reported for the first time in the central India, in the Maharashtra and Karnataka states. Within a span of a year, it invaded the entire states of the India. So the first group of natural enemy who started attacking on the fall were the predators, variety of predators. Later, different species of parasitoids made association with the fall. Coming to the parasitoids and parasites of fall attacking different developmental stages, nearly four families of parasitoids were found or recorded on the four eggs. Nearly eight families, including one family of one parasitic family, Marmitidae, recorded on larva. Four families recorded on pupa and one nematode family recorded on adults also. So based on this, you can see that eggs and larvae are the most susceptible for life stages to the natural enemies. So in their native range, four had 424 natural enemies. After entering into the Afrida, the natural enemy complex was increased by 9.43% and the natural enemies become 464. Again, when it entered in the Asia, the natural enemy complex increased by 21.23%. It means the four is increasing their distribution and the natural enemy complex, complex is also widening day by day. So more than 43 species of natural enemies reported from India alone. Coming to the parasitoids, more than 10 species of parasitoids uh, were recorded or found a significant role in the major agro ecosystem of Northeast India. Northeast India is the biodiversity hotspot and is the major growing area, major major growing area in the country. So there are three egg parasitoid species reported on four. One is Telenomus remus. Telenomus remus is a dominant one. 
Another is the trichogramma chilonis, recorded only in central part of the country or the India. And third is the egg larval parasitic chilonomus parmosanus. It is also important one. Among the larval parasitoids, the Campylodus pluridi was the most dominant one. And one nematodes, that is parasitic fem, Examar albicans, also recorded on fog. We'll see one by one. First and the most dominant was the Telonemus remus. In Indian conditions, uh, this Telonemus remus adapted to diverse climatic conditions occur throughout the India. Therefore, it considered the most ideal candidate parasitoid for augmented by control of the fog. It has been recorded in different states, northeastern, western, southern, and central. This almost every state we found this uh, Telonemus remus. Though it's a bit difficult to multiply them on the laboratory and other hosts, but still we can multiply it on the eggs of the Sporoptera later on. See the life cycle of this parasitoids uh, in Indian conditions. A single female were found parasitizing nearly 250 to 300 eggs in their lifetime. And they successfully parasitized top one and sometimes two layers of the four eggs in their egg mass. And in Northeast condition, we found more than 70% of the egg mass parasitized by this parasitoids. Nearly 50% of the eggs per egg mass were parasitized. Another egg parasite was Echogramma chilonis. It recorded under four eggs in different location of central and south India only. Since it's the ideal egg parasite for, for augmentation, because it can be multiplied in the laboratory, can be stored, transported to a distance, and it's had a short life cycle, nearly eight to 10 days. Third one is the egg larval parasite, Chilonemus parmosanus. Egg larval parasite recorded from northeast, central, and south India. It's robust in size compared to other egg parasitoids and higher fecundity, but it has competition with Thelomus remus also. It lays eggs inside the host eggs, but emerge from the fourth star larvae and pupate into the soil. It can be multiplied on the laboratory on the eggs of Sporoptera only. Sporoptera species can be Prodoptera, Pujipada, Sporoptera, Litura. See the life cycle of this species. Chilonemus parmosan has complete their development period in 22 to 25 days. They lay eggs inside the eggs of the uh, Sporoptera frugipoda, then develop into the larvae. The interesting thing is the parasitized caterpillars of the fall remain smaller than the unparasitized one, means it has the ability to control their host load. Though it's a emolium feeder, but it come out from their host in the fourth, late third or fourth stars and make their own cocoon inside the soil. We found two types of competitions in egg larval parasites. When the competition between uh, Chilonus parmosanus and Chilonemus remus, and another is the competition between two egg parasites, Chilonemus remus and Cogramma chilonis. Coming to the larval parasites, Campylotus chloridi. Campylotus chloridi belongs to family Ichnomodidae. This is the most efficient larval parasite of fall in northeast, central, and south Indian states because it's able to enter inside the mage hole and parasitize new red larvae. And it can complete the egg larval period in six to eight days, nearly within a week period, and emerge as an adult from the cocoon in four to five days. If you see, the one typical character of this is that they form the cocoon near the whole portion of the mage. See their life cycle. The female parasitize the new net, mostly a younger one, a first star, or sometimes early second stars. They feed inside the internal content of the larva and come after finishing the entire content of the larva come out from from their body and make their own cocoon the interesting thing of them is if you see the head capsule along with the certain portion of the skin along with the cocoon is the indication or the character to identify the cocoon of this species it completes the egg to people formation in six to nine days another uh, specific is the special is the acropolis manily but it was recorded only from the Northeast India, only one typical area of the country. It has short life cycle and high potential of parasitism only during September to October period. Its development period completes in 10 to 18 days. Another parasitoid, larval parasitoid, the Aloides species is most specific parasitoid of fall in America, but it had also been recorded in Central India on fall larvae in testing border mage. Another important larval parasites, Oxidigium capsicum and Coxidigium luteum. So this is the important larval parasites in North Indian conditions, where mage is mainly grown in North India also. 
see the life cycle of this coccidium lutium it's not our study but according to the studies this coccidium lutium reduces the damage caused by polynomium in image form though it's a hemolymph feeder but it also have the ability to control low spreading like chilonus parmosanus thereby they reduces the leap consumption rate of this polynomium another one gregarisic parasitoids we recorded on for is the odontophyris species it's a rare one only so minor parasitoids we recorded on for but they are numerically less in numbers but they play very significant role in form management because those escape from eggs and larvae it will be taken care of this species they include some unidentified ichnomon wasp acidic flies netilia some unidentified species of ichnomonidae this is also interesting species of parasite examarmis albicum it has a worldwide distribution but it typically occur in only a megalia state of northeast india because of very high rainfall area and high humidity the humid climate and high rainfall are typical of that state during march to october the create suitable conditions for parasitism of this crop they are known to parasitize nearly 8 to 30% of the fall are in different areas of the state they also we also recorded it on the fop pp this is very interesting i think this is the only example recorded from the fop pp this is the image you can see here black color background see the mode of parasitism of the this marmitid nematodes mostly they come out from the soil during early morning morning mostly in the rainy season rainy time the infected juvenile of marmitid climb onto the plants during moist condition usually in the rainy condition and infect the susceptible host which feed on the plant pod most of them what happens because of the rain they water accumulate inside the hole and this polar mammal has to come out and they become susceptible to the attack of this infected juvenile then this marmitid juveniles nourish themselves from the insect humulin and then emerge to complete the remaining growth now we come to the another group of uh, natural enemies the whorl dependence whorl army is basically a whorl worm the mage will protect this whorl army from direct sunlight and by control agent mainly predators with larval preference of this whorl for this whorl army is mainly to reduce the cannibalism also and predation also because this whole condition is a hidden site which is difficult uh, for the predator to attack and also it is difficult for us chemical control to become success in this conditions we also observe most of the times the different species of predators waiting outside the hole so that larvae should come out and they will eat it we will in see those uh, mage defenders mage hole defenders we recorded more than 20 species of predators playing significant role in mage ecosystem including some pentatomid bug species you can think of a redwoody bug different species of ants airwigs and variety of spiders we'll see this is you can think of a porcella right it's a pentatomid bug it's very efficient predator of fall because it has the ability to catch the fall larvae from the mage hole it feeds on 3 to 6 instars of this fall larvae very dominant and very common one another species we observed only in northeast asia is a cosmolestis species They feed on all the the fall larval stages, first star to the last star. Another group is the predatory ants. We recorded three genera of the ants: Crematogaster, Pedole, and Componotus. They feeding on the fall eggs and the larvae in the field condition. Then different species of airwigs also we have recorded more than two species of airwigs we have recorded on fall life stages, mainly fall eggs. units and sometimes on the fall pp also inside the soil predatory wasps we recorded more than three species of predatory wasps predating upon this fall larvae in the field conditions they are also very efficient predators of 3 to 15 stars of the fall larvae going to the predatory spiders we recorded more than three species of predatory spider spiders feeding upon the fall larvae including this dicti species hamiltonia species olive species then the common and dominant one is the oxypus burmanicus then some unidentified mitrigidi oxypus again different species of oxypus ipasa species licoge then ant mimicking spider ivertonius malayana hylas species oxypus burmanicus a different version uh, different uh, uh, form One interesting species also 
we recorded on the match field is monkey walk with the spider news corona pankti chera coming to the pathogens more than four species of entomopathogens we recorded on the four the most dominant one was the metrism relay another was the baculo virus poreptera frigipar one nuclear polyotrichous virus and two species of bacteria if you see this entomopathogen numore relay is the most dominant by control agent of the point in india because mage is mostly grown during the kharif season which is the rainy season and where we found 40 to 60% mortality in the rainy season and they are able to cause this is in almost all the larva stages starting from first star to the last star you can see here this is almost fifth to sixth star larvae um, cadavers of metrism relay bacterial virus poreptera frigipara npv this is also one of the efficient by control agents of for during rainy season and mostly during the cloudy climate which is very common in northeastern states during rainy season and under favorable condition it can cause almost 18 to 25% of the larval mortality even more than that if the conditions are favorable some bacterial endomopathogen they are minor one only therefore i am not explaining this is beaveria basian also i have recorded on for but this is also rare one so if you see the conservation and augmented by control of uh, by using natural enemy in indian conditions in northeast india we have developed one ecologically sound and small hunter friendly methods of farm management this in, according to this method mage crop should be planted during the early mage in order to have minimum infestation because of very high natural par parasitism and predation rate so as to get the more yield during this period and we also suggest to use the whole application of soil or slurry at least two times 25 to 30 days of interval during early hole to mid hole stage so that we can get more than 90% of the fraud damage and increase the granule as well as higher benefit cost ratio because once you add the soil fall are it <clears throat> once you add the soil it's create a, a undesirable or you can say uh, they hamper or they impair the habitat of this fall so fall are we once they come out easily the predators or the parasites get the chance to attack something this technique is very affordable for the small holder farmers environment friendly and this technique effectively utilizes the potential of on farm natural enemy against the crop in two independent studies on bio intensive practices in india once in karnataka state of india washne and coworkers suggested to use a bio intensive integrated management by using pheromone traps metrism relay metrism and isopli neem oil and be very basic in integrated manner so as to reduce the egg masses by 71 to 76% larvae by 74 74 to 80% and there are chances of increasing yield by 38 to 42% in our another study by our group we studied the insecticidal potential of very common and traditionally important plant of north east india xanthella marmatum and we found that the fruit extract of this plant has larvicidal ovicidal and oviposition deterrence activity against the crop the lc 50 value of this uh, second star larvae on four we recorded to be 0.44% at 96 hours of tre treatment and this extracts found to have 100% webicidal effect at 2.2% concentration these are some of our recently published articles after the four invasion in india one in biological control crop protection current science one in journal of plant disease and protection and most recently along with the mark we published this one we also published the first comprehensive pocket group on for diagnosis and management and this was the most widely followed document during the first invasion phase in india we published it in almost five languages english khasi nepali hindi and garo in short high invasiveability the crop keep on increasing natural enemy complex day by day and the major agro system of the india is very rich in natural enemies and pollinators therefore we have tremendous scope for their exploration and identification of new natural enemies for the potential or the dominant natural enemy need to be utilized for the farm management for example tillemus ramus compound exploratory though there are some issues and mass multiplication we should work on that aspect emphasis should be on conservation biological control program for example that we suggested for ecologically sound method simple methods can also have importance in terms of conservation of the natural enemy 
we should also encourage crop diversification, habitat manipulation, and natural enemy friendly pesticides so as to conserve the natural enemy and effectively utilize them for the farm management. Thank you so much. Thank you for the participation. Thank you for organizers, moderators, and coordinators. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, <clears throat> DM. Um, so we will see if there are any questions. There's plenty of time for questions. Eh, le agradecemos al doctor Firaque su participación y esto, estamos invitando sus preguntas. Hay, hay bastante tiempo para, para preguntas. So, so I'll, I'll raise my hand, uh, DM. Um, so it, it was a great presentation, by the way. Lots of new things that I thank I you, know. thank you, Julio. Um, so let me ask you about the bathylid ectoparasitoid that you mentioned. How how does it what what is what is its life history? Uh, I mean, it, it, it's just very 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 interesting to me that that there's this ectoparasitoid on this caterpillar that is not an endophyte, right? It's feed, feeding on the outside of, of plants. So, so can you tell us a little bit more about its uh, life history? Which one? The, the bathylid uh, ectoparasitoid that you mentioned. Oh, odontifiris. Yeah, I don't know the bathylid. Bathylidy? Yeah, yeah, it's bathylis, odontifiris uh -huh. only. Uh, let, me, let me share one more time. Oh, okay. Thank you. Le, le pregunto al doctor Firaque sobre la biología del vetílido, porque según nos cuenta es un ectoparasitoide de cogollero y típicamente, a mi entender, los ectoparasitoides son parasitoides. Uh, this is odontifier species and one more ectoparasitoides we have recorded. That's Euplectra species that I have not shown here. Euplectrus xanthocephalus. That uh -huh. is one. And another one, this odontifier is, they are gregarious ectoparasitoides of all RV, but they are rare only. That's not very common. So so I wonder whether you're, you're recovering these from maybe deep inside the whorls or when army, fall army worm is acting as, as a... Uh, a stem bar because it, it also does that because it's very intriguing. Wow, this is, yeah. this is Actually, very interesting. Uh, we recorded it from the fall RV only, but uh, not from the whole. The infected, okay. uh, yeah, the parasitized uh, larvae of by this parasite, we recorded on the outside portion, not inside the whole. Uh -huh. Cool. Yeah. Very interesting. I recorded four larvae, one by this odentipyrus species and three by this Euplectus gentocephalus. That is also okay. interesting one. The gregarious, both are gregarious. Wow, wow, something to, to look at. Yeah. So far, we found that Chilonemus remus, Compulatus chloridi, and Chilonus parmesanus. They three were the very dominant parasitoids in India. And in case of pathogens, Metrazem relay, and up to certain extent that uh, Baculoviruses, they play a very significant role. And predators also, they play a very significant role. But the problem is that no one have studied them in very deeply in depth. It need to be studied, predatory mm. potential of different predators. Okay. Um, are there any other questions uh, out there for Dr. Firake? Habrá preguntas para el Dr. Firake? It would be better if you ask now because it's too late here in yeah, India. Yeah, yeah, you, you wouldn't be able to be at the discussion session. Yeah, it's difficult. Por favor, pregunten the... si tienen eh, preguntas ahorita. Porque Dr. Luego, Mark eh... has one in the okay. chat. Yeah, so uh, Dr. Firaka, you suggested an IPM strategy, um, including several tools and natural enemies. Is it economically affordable for far farmers, your strategy? La pregunta es de que el doctor Firaque sugirió una estrategia de, de MIP que, que incluye distintas tecnologías y enemigos naturales. La pregunta es qué tan viable económicamente es esta, esta estrategia para los campesinos.
Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Dr. Mark's question was, you suggested an IPM strategy including several tools and natural enemy. Is it economically affordable for us? Actually, the strategy I have shown here, economically sound was only to plant your crop in early March in Northeast India is the first step. Second step is you just add the soil inside the hole two times at 25 days interval from early hole to mid hole stage. You can reduce the damage by 90%. We did it for we repeated this experiment two times in the field condition. We found a very interesting results. Only in Northeast India. Interesting. Uh, so, so I have a question too. That uh, Northeast India, this is a by default organic. Pesticides are not allowed. The cropping or land holding size is very less. Land is undulating. You cannot uh, take the sprayers on the undulating hills. So by in that conditions, if you use this strategy, you can save your crop by more than 95, 90%. Because natural name is also so high. You, you can see um, among the 43 natural enemy species recorded from India, more than 38 recorded alone from those that area, Northeast India, where I worked for 11 years. Very now good. I transfer to the new institute. Ok, so, eh, la respuesta en breve eh, es de que pa al parecer sí es, eh, eh, sí es este, accesible a los productores la estrategia que ellos manejan, sobre todo porque se basa mucho en, en conservación de enemigos naturales y los insumos, por ejemplo, están aplicando, utilizando suelo y lo están aplicando eh, ya sea en en forma húmeda o como, como una suspensión en el cogollo. Y esto les ha dado muy, muy buen resultado. Eh, mortalidad hasta del 90% algo así de cogollero. Entonces parece ser que es una, una medida interesante. Um, I, I want to follow up on, 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 this, uh, on, on what you suggested of, of, of uh, applying soil directly in the world. Okay. And, and, yes, and this yes. is very interesting to me because I, I always tend to think in terms of, okay, we've been growing maize for thousands of years in, in Mexico and we've dealt with fall armyworm for, as a pest for probably as long. And I hadn't heard that solution. And, and obviously it's working for you. Do you know, do you have an idea of what the mechanism might be? What is the soil doing in the yeah, world? I will, the fall I will show you that... Uh cost benefit ratio also of this, this technology. Okay. En lo que busca el doctor, su, su transparencia, le preguntaba sobre la tecnología esta de aplicar suelo al cogollo y los resultados que le da. Entonces, yeah, eh, you can see this is la soil application twice. This is the fourth number bar. The benefit cost ratio was also high because here, though it's a difficult to add this soil in the soil is it may be labor intensive, but for the small holders and where pesticides are not allowed, this is better option. More pesticide price also can be compensated by these labors. So, so evidently it's 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 competitive even with your insecticide applications. That that's that's terrific. Yeah, that's why this beneficial cost range is high compared to others. Yeah, so, so do you plan on, on looking into the, the mechanism? What is, how is the, the soil operating here? Is it a oh, deterrent? Is mainly it the mechanism from... is that this soil is disturbing the habitat of this fall RV. Once you add the soil, fall RV has to come out. And once they come out, naturally we get chance. Huh. Interesting. So this is the entire presentation. This is separate presentations. Yeah, you can see here. How oh, this, that's the soil right there. Yeah, the, how this concept has come out. Yeah. For the first time, when this poi invaded, we found that the natural presence of water inside the hole detects this polar V and expose them to the parasites. You can see here. This, when the mage is smaller, less than 15 to 20 days old, this has a natural capacity to store the water, either rainwater or the dews. Mm -hmm. But after 20 to 25 days, this 
capacity automatically uh, it means because of the phenology of the plants it's difficult for this plant to store this water so we identify the other cheaper and non toxic solid materials so that we can create or disturb the habitat so we use the soil and other materials also and we found that once you add the soil fallar will come out if they eat this particular portion their growth is also inhibited because of the phenolic compounds on that side holes is the premature leaves or you can see primordial leaf have less phenolic compounds compared to the older one you can see this is wow that's 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 yeah, one more thing i will show you initially we studied the crop population dynamics in the field conditions in northeast india and we planted this mesh plant from uh, mesh plants from march 1st to the june 1st this is the mesh growing area from march to the october and we found that if you grow your mesh crop from may to the june period the infestation of the fall is very less and yield is also increasing up to the may then started decreasing this is in 2019 and 20 also we found this is mainly because of during this time the natural limes activity is very high in the next slide i will show you we studied the natural larvae larval mortality in the mesh planted from march 1 to the june 8 and we found that you see here this is the total larval mortality in 2019 in in the crop planted in the first week of march you get 22.57% mortality it increases up to 65% in june in the second year this natural mortality increases because of the addition of some more natural enemy including campylus chloridae it's very efficient larval parasites so we found that more than 80% natural mortality in when you play uh, plant your crop during may and june so based on this we suggested that if we plant or mesh crop during early may then our yield is also high natural mortality also for infestation also less then we studied different uh, entomopathogens and commercially available as well as those formulations produced by the academic institution we tested them we found that even if you add the soil inside the hole two times that play uh, that also do the same that other surgery then why to use this uh, chemical uh, biological pesticide formulation if the results are similar i see yeah then right. we yeah then we did it in the laboratory also we simulated the experiment and we found that if we give them this if fall larvae come out automatically natural enemies get chance if they feed their growth is also hampered you can see here mostly the metrism relay and bacula virus infection is very high if they feed on this such a portion okay thank you very much dr firak i'm going to have to interrupt you because it's time to get started with uh marks yeah thank you thank you so thank you so much and thank you for staying up so late to be with us thank we you. really appreciate it and and uh, you provided some very useful information